ho and a bottle of rum. Captain Yarface number one. Woo! Here we go. It's the Metal Hammer of Doom. I am your host, the man data reporter, and frankly, I'm mortified. Mr. Mark Rattledge. And joining me in tonight's drinking game is... Jesse, are you there? I am here. Okay. <laughs> I'm here. I'm listening to every word you're saying. I don't want to step all over this intro. <laughs> okay. You you were so quiet. I thought you were like, oh, God, did we get disconnected? No, I am here, sir. I am ready. All right. Jesse Starcher of the Source Material Podcast and president of the Captain Yarface Fan Club. Oh, please. Please. I would love to be somewhat affiliated with some fan club of Captain Yarface but I don't think I'd be able to do him justice, to be honest. Do you I, wish... Although I am his top... I am apparently Ramahoy's top fan, according to Facebook right now. I bet, and this is true, I I think you want him to shoot, to sh- you, want him to shoot you with his treasure gun. <laughs> right in the face. <laughs> with some, with some uh, diamonds and gems. Yes. Because that's the ammo it holds. Oh, Rumahoy, Time to Party, which came out October 25th, 2019. This one, this we've been waiting for this for so long, and we were so I excited. I know. That we bumped all kinds of stuff off the schedule to make room for this. Yes, we did. Um, we went from having one of the most lauded lyrical composers in Blind Guardian... <laughs> and we gave them the boot, the big pirate boot, right in the ass. <laughs> it said, out of here, we are going to be making room for some of the most simple lyrics known to man given to us by Rum Ahoy. And now, I will tell you that I am perfectly fine with that. Now, listen, <clears throat> tonight's going to be a little different because uh, you can't, For those of you who might listen to this podcast while you're driving or you're working, this is strictly a a home podcast. You have to listen to this while you're at home because this involves copious amounts of alcohol. (laughs) Oh, boy. Okay, we're going to play a drinking game tonight. Uh, Jesse's got his bottle of rum. Mm -hmm. I've got my bottle of rum. And every oh, time hi. Captain Yarface tells us that he's Captain Yarface and take a drink. <laughs> Whenever Captain Yarface tells you that he'll that that he'll or we'll drink some rum, take a drink. And we'll see how fast each one of us gets alcohol poisoning. Oh, I cannot wait to tell you the word count statistics on this. I've already <laughs> lugged them in and we are ready to go. Let's let, let's just, just start right off with how many times does rum appear? Okay, well, we know that our good friends over at wordcounttools.com provide us with an unlimited amount of entertainment when it comes to, uh, you know, just kind of diving deep into the lyrics. Well, I took every lyric off of this album and shoved it in to wordcounttools.com. Did you uh, shove it in with your treasure gun? Oh, my goodness. All the way in with my treasure gun. Uh, You wouldn't believe this. I just gave them shit for, you know, having simple lyrics. The readability level of the album itself is college student. I don't know if they're factoring in the length because I just took all these songs and put them in there. But readability level, college student. So I'm going to give you a – I'm going to give you a chance to – guess the top three words and i have a feeling you might be able to guess two the third one's going to be tough uh but the third one's tied with actually a uh, well uh, number three is tied with two other ones but let's hear it Let, let's hear what you think the number one word is that is used most frequently in the rum Ahoy album rum that is correct with 22 uses Throughout, so already, if you got your shots of rum, that's how many times you're taking. <laughs> Start shot. drinking, everybody. <laughs> Twenty-two times you will hear that throughout this album, uh, and then guess what number two is? Captain. Nope, Captain is not on the list out of the top ten. Captain Yarface. Nope, not that is it. It is one single word is what we're looking for. Yarface. Nope, and it is specifically 
Well, I don't know. It, it, it's used throughout, actually, throughout some of the album, but specifically, Drink. If, I want you to think of Treasure Gun. Okay. Um, All right. Pirate Eye. No. Nope. <laughs> Get Pat Mullen on the phone. Uh, it's Bang. Bang, bang, I'll shoot you with my gun. Bang, bang, bang. bang. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and then uh, third, the third one they have listed is Us, but uh, it's tied with number four, which is Ahoy. That's right. Mm. So there you go. That's your yeah, that's your top ten. Let's see if there's a trifecta. <laughs> there is a trifecta here. The number one. Okay, let's say trifecta. There's... <laughs> There you can do you can look at single words, you can look at two words, and you can look at three words. All right. So two words. <laughs> this is funnier than shit. All right, so number one word by the single let's try it again. Number one single word rum. Number one two word phrase is rum rum. And number <laughs> one three word phrase is rum rum rum. <laughs> Terrific. Uh, uh, that's, that's spectacular. All right, man. Uh, man, I have anticipated this album since I r saw the track list. What was that? Last year sometime we saw what the track list was going to be, and we saw in there one Harambe, the pirate gorilla. I And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. There's no way they're... And they followed through. So, you know, I have really looked forward to this album, and... Right now, I'll tell you, folks, I wasn't let down. You guys can make your own decisions here, but, uh, yeah. Oh, man. Let me I'm ask a you a question. Yes, sir. Are you ready to pick up the shit <laughs> and throw it in the air? <laughs> sir, it is time to party. Oh, my son's favorite song on this album is Poop Deck Party. Oh, my goodness, that... Is a, there's so many favorites off here? So many, so many favorites. Um, you know, we're having a lot of fun with this album, and this album is all kinds of silly. But I'll tell you, Rum Ahoy, from a strict metal perspective, kicks tons of ass. Yeah, yeah, they do. And look at where they came from. I mean, they they showed up on the scene on the Metal Hammer of Doom scene. You know, la uh, what was that like two years ago or last year? And we were impressed. It was fun. It was absurd. Uh, and they did a great job of putting together some songs that had a lot of influence from different uh, different genres. Uh, we, we had the Haitian Slam on there. Yeah, uh, you know, there was some there was some great stuff and a great variety of of different sounding pirate tunes. And I was like, how are they going to top it, ladies and gentlemen? Time to party. They really leaned into the gimmick on this one. Um... Like more so than the the triumph of piracy. I really like. I, I feel like with this one, they were like, "Let's not hold back. Let's just lean into the gimmick, lean into the silliness, and see what we come up with." And it paid off. I can tell you right now, without even playing any tracks, this is probably one of my favorite albums of this year. Like, <laughs> by, <laughs> I remember one in one A. Yeah. Oh man, this, this one's Steel Panther, baby. Yep. Yeah. All right, let's get into it. This first song kicks all kinds of ass. <laughs> it is heavy as a really heavy thing, as they say. This is Cowboys of the Sea.
Oh uh, shit, that's the breakdown. Oh, you had to. I, I wanted to make sure that you played it right up to. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Captain Yarface, that hat looks so good on you. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. So you have dropped an album and you want to open something. Uh, open the album with something that's great, and you did not fail us, Captain Yarface. Oh my gosh, Cowboys of the Sea. <sighs> that morning, so time to party releases. I said, Kira, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> We're it's time to go to school, and you have to listen to Captain Yarface and Rum Ahoy. So the first song is Cowboys, Cowboys of the Sea, and I was like, oh boy, what are we going to get here? And Mark, I think you put it best. That first lyric is the most triumphant lyric we've heard in <laughs> such a long time. I'm Captain Yarface, and I'm back. <laughs> yes, you are, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, geez. Oh, my God. I, he, he just so much leans into this character. Yep. And it's, like, unabashedly... Like, I don't even know the right word for it. And he's just right up... Like, just not holding anything back. Like, there's no... It's so funny because, like, we talk about so many of these bands that really play artistically with lyrics. Uh, with lyrics. You know, they yeah. they are, are able to sort of blend certain thoughts and feelings together in a very poetic way. And then here's this fucker. I'm Captain Yarface and I'm here. I'm riding a seahorse. You know? <laughs> You know, oh, it's wow. so straightforward. Mm-hmm. And, and to me, that's like a welcome change from some of the stuff that we do where people, you know, are spending so much time trying to give you, like I said, a very wistful, poetic uh, connection to their thoughts and feelings. And then here's this guy like, nope, here, my thoughts are rum. My feelings are pirates. <laughs> Uh, have you missed me? Because guess what, motherfuckers? I am back. So oh, good, and yeah. I lo- I love like the call and re- the, the the call and release. You know uh, where he he does. I am Captain Yarface, and I am back. You know, and I was like, welcome back, Captain Yarface. We really <laughs> missed you. You know what? I have the the whole thing right here. Hang on a second. Um, yeah, I am Captain Yarface, and I am back with my ship and my crew and my new cowboy hat. Welcome back, Captain Yarface. That hat looks so good on you. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I have returned from across the waves, riding my seahorse into the fray. Don't be silly now, Captain. A seahorse is far too small. No, it isn't. <laughs> yeah, that, it's I, so I, good. I had to rewind it. I, I actually rewound it. I said, Kira, did you hear what he just said? I said, listen to him. He said he was on a seahorse, and the other guys called him out on it. He's like, no way. Hold on a second. And it gets even better towards the end. It's like, sailing the seas of the wild, wild west, digging for treasure on a pirate quest. We've not found any treasure except for this moldy shoe. Heat digging crew. With hey, a- I, fucking <laughs> Captain Yarface is great. I mean, you, you're, you talk about a character that, I mean, he has taken over this album he, yeah you know the last one okay yeah he was kind of the centerpiece but it was rum ahoy and you know i, I he, yeah this is really the captain your face experience yes it is <laughs> it is a blessed experience mm. blessed but let's give um, credit where credit's due the bass drop the bit sorry the, the bassist bass? is, sorry one more time the bassist we'll fix it in post <laughs> is cabin boy treasure quest yes the drums, swashbuckling Pete. Mm-hmm. On the guitar, Bootsman Walk the Plank. Walk the Plank, all one word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. You know, they all, they, they all wear masks. I mean, people, if you haven't seen Rum Ahoy, you, you've got to think. I, I want you to picture a band, okay? Obviously, they're leaning into the pirate gimmick, but they all wear black ski masks, which is great. Um, it's kind of unique, too, because you don't, as far as I know, I know of a few pirate bands. You're not seeing them. Uh, do that uh, and you also have the lead singer Captain Yarface who I swear is seven feet tall the dude <laughs> is freaking huge I mean you do not even want to think about accidentally running into this guy in the back of an alley because he he's, he's not just seven feet skinny he is 17 or seven feet thick um, so go ahead Mark what was you going to say uh, just that um, 
I, I, yep. I lost it. Yep, lost. Yes, <laughs> I lost it. I'm really tired. <laughs> hey, well, okay. Let me let me make sure that uh, I, I I get my notes out here before we move on to the second song. Um, so there's a fart joke in this song, which is spectacular. <laughs> uh, when, when they're all sitting around, a pair, you know, this is a cow. It's a cowboy song, and you definitely get that feeling that it's a cowboy song with that like kind of. Uh, I don't know what the word for it is. It's a bell of some sort that gets, you know, it, there's like a bell that's struck throughout the song. And then it has that real, oh my goodness, like Clint Eastwood Western feel almost to it. And, uh, but yeah, they're sitting around eating their beans. Yeah. And then right. the, Okay, now I remember what I was going to say. Oh, tell me. You, you might be inclined to not take this band seriously because they're very jokey. This comes off almost like a comedy album. But that's, that's what makes it a real treasure is they, they had a lot of fun with this, but they took it seriously. They were yeah. like, if we're going to do a pirate album, let's go all the way with it. Let's really lean into this concept. And, and that's what makes it fun. Because they're yeah. not making fun of the genre. They're not making fun of being a pirate. This isn't necessarily a criticism of some kind. They're just like... You know, it's like when Vince McMahon gives you a really stupid gimmick and like you, you become the Undertaker. Mm-hmm. You really you lean into it. You do the best job you can with it, and you make it work. And that's what I get from time to party, where it's like we're we're just gonna be, we're gonna fully embrace this as much as we can. And and I want to stress that, like I think the incl- the first inclination a lot of people might have is, well, Romahoy is silly. I know yeah. I want to listen to I want to listen to good serious metal. It's like, well, if you do that, then you're missing out here. Because yeah. this is the most fun I've had listening to an album in a long time. Oh, dude. One of my notes on here is that it, even if you cannot somehow, I know me and you where we're going to put this when it's all said and done at the end of the year. But even if you could not put this at number one in, a, in critically acclaimed metal albums on the Metal Hammer of Doom, it is absolutely the most fun I've ever had maybe possibly doing this show. <laughs> I mean, it is up there, dude. There is, there is some albums that I've had a lot of fun talking about, but this one, this one's going to go down in history for me. Um, it, listen, if you're going across, I, I, you know, your local record store or whatever, and you see the cover of this album, you're going to probably be inclined to be like, okay, yeah, that's silly. I mean, you look at it, Captain Yarface is, uh, it's it, he's right there on the cover in the middle of his pirate ship shark coming at him you got mummies uh, and I mean the name of the album is time numeral number two colon <laughs> party okay <laughs> I mean so you you kind of get an idea of what's going to happen I see Harambe back there it looks like he's riding the shark um, but anyway you kind of have an idea of what you're going to get here you're going to get a kind of a um, a tale that's told across eras of time. Now, that's not prevalent in every song, but it's definitely... Here we have Cowboys of the Sea, which definitely has that Western feel to it. Um, and then as we progress, you'll see as we kind of hop around some of different time periods throughout history, which is, again, you can't call that... That's actually pretty darn in, you know, inventive, in my opinion. That's a, That's a really a great concept for a pirate out al- uh, a pirate metal album. So uh I'm ready man whenever you are to go to the next one. All right. Yeehaw. <laughs> Yeehaw. <laughs> All right everybody. It is time to party.
there are some definitive themes on this album. Okay. One of them is drink rum till you die. <laughs> yep. So what I one of the things I like about Time to Party is that they weren't fully committed to just doing various takes on sea shanties, the way Ale Storm tends to be. Like mm-hmm. L, like Ale Storm has a very definitive pirate sound. Um, the, you know, again, they kind of start with a folky sea shanty kind of a thing, and they never really go away from that. That's like the, at, at the central core of their music. And obviously they brightened up with some like traditional heavy metal and whatnot, progressive heavy metal. But I would say for the most part, what you get out of Ale Storm is, a, is variations on the same sea shanty gimmick. What I like about Time to Party is that like they're not pigeonholing themselves sound wise into we're just doing sea shanties. Oh yeah. No. They way. are all over the goddamn road. <laughs> Drunk yeah, on dude. rum. <laughs> they, they are. They are. This is this is like, you know, the pirates have gotten loose uh, and they just they stumbled into, you know, a pop uh, a pop session, you know, and and there were they decide, well hell, we could do some of this too. And they start recording. And then, oh, okay, here we go. We're going to fall over here. We're going to get into some EDM. Um, oh, all right. Well, the Pirates can take care of that, too. Uh, so, man, it, and that's fun. And, and I know I remember that on their previous album, too. So they they do a great job of taking those influences and making the songs actually good. You know, you would think, mm-hmm. well, you know, we're going to – you try and do that with pirate metal. It's not going to sound so great. Bullshit, man. I mean, this I've I haven't really like stomped my feet to an album in a while either, and this would be one of them where I'm just kind of like, oh shit, and there go my feet. I'm wanting to dance a jig. Yeah, uh, they. I I think they did a really good job. Where this album is very successful is they kept it interesting. They they kept it moving. They kept it interesting. They made it so that very few of these sound remarkably similar. To where you start getting samey and bored. Mm-hmm. Huffman made it back too in this song. I don't know if you remember Huffman from the previous song. I think he was like the great. What was the name of that or a previous album? I should say. Uh, on Triumph of Piracy, there was Huffman the Pirate King, and so Huffman was at this party cooking some meat, and every pirate loves a barbecue treat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, do they, do they make nice use of rhyme? In this. Oh yeah, oh dude, it's it's so unforgivably simplistic, but it's unforgivably fun, and that is really all that matters here. All right, so this next one is clearly talking about penis. <laughs> well. Okay, so you ready? Do you want the history before or after? No, I want it now because you were like, "Oh my god, I can't believe they did this!" And I'm like, "Yep, he's singing about his dick. What are you getting all excited for?" He is not singing about his dick, sir. Oh, okay. So I got you, it wrong. You're, you're going to love this. All okay. right. Okay. Yeah, I. But you have to explain. You explain the history. You have to explain why you were like just bowled over by this and had to like text me like a maniac. You're like, "Oh my god, you got to hear this! I can't believe they did this!" And I'm like. Who? What? I'm trying to work. Leave me alone, uh, psycho. Well, here's the thing. I texted you this, or at least uh, sent you the link or something about this last year. Okay. Okay. Um, what had happened? Uh, I was messing around on Twitter. Somebody tagged Rumahoy, or Rumahoy retweeted it. All right. So a person by the name of Keaton Patty uh, tweeted out. I forced a bot to listen to over 1,000 hours of Rum Ahoy songs and then asked it to write a Rum Ahoy song on its own. Here are That's the lyrics. what this is? Here are the lyrics. Rum Ahoy, treasure gun. I've got a gun. Now, I'm going to read you the lyrics here because okay. it differs a little bit from the song. Got it. But it, here's the lyrics. I've got a gun. It's made out of treasure. When I shoot you in the face, it gives me lots of pleasure. The bullets are diamond, and the trigger is gold. It's a really good gun, and it's very, very old. Bang, bang, bang. That's the sound it makes. Valuable gems are the ammo it takes. If you really want to try it, just give me a call. Captain Yarface says, guns for all. Yar, a treasure (laughs) gun. It's my favorite weapon. All right, let's go and shoot it at a pirate. Bang, bang. I'll shoot you with my gun. 
bang, 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 I'll shoot you with my treasure gun. Bang, bang, I'll shoot you with my gun. Yeah, I'll shoot you till you're dead, and then I'll drink some rum. So this was a... I, I'm going to say that this was a bot. All right, so here's what happens. Rumahoy retweets it and says, I think that was very, very good. You know, how, how, whatever he <laughs> says. Um, but I... Why did you say it like Arnold Schwarzenegger? (laughs) So I write it off. And then I see the track list after the album drops or before the album drops, one or the other. It was when you were sharing it in the middle of uh, us doing the podcast that one day. And I saw Treasure Gun and I was like, no fucking way. No way did they actually take that and make a song out of it. And of course, that Friday when things dropped, I immediately texted you and I was like, I cannot believe they did this. <laughs> and I so, have no idea what you're talking about, by the way. Like now I do. Now I'm starting to remember the story. Yes. But I, yeah. but yeah, I, whatever association I had with it when it was originally done, I had plumb forgot about it. This is an AI created song that that's took. fucking hilarious. I know, dude. It's, it's actually fucking genius. And I, I was like, there's no way they're going to turn this into a good song. <laughs> and, it's, and lyrically, it is the goofiest shit you could even fucking think of. But you got to remember, this comes out of AI. And AI is doing some, you know, they've done this before with other uh, songs and, and poems. I think AI was creating some poems. So, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen, like, the um, motivational phrases uh, that AI creates. Oh, there's I was some gonna say, stuff. I feel like like an AI. They did an experiment with an AI, and it turned out to be like a right racist. <laughs> <laughs> that would not surprise me. It would so not you, surprise you know me. what we have to do now? You and I have to form a band. It's called the Schedule. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and all of our songs have to be written by AI. Ah, oh, I. I as long as, as long as you can make it so, uh, like somehow sound like Rum Ahoy did with this, which is <laughs> great, um, then uh, yeah, oh, I'm all in, buddy. So, I'm all in. Real quick, and I don't want to stay focused on the music, but I got to tell you this real quick story. Let's hear it. So I say to my boss, I'm like, hey, because of my biopsy on Thursday and then having to cover somebody on Wednesday, I only have one day to work on sick calls. And she says, okay. So I said, so I rescheduled everything to be to funnel into the one day that I have, and I just wiped out the entire week on that one day. And, you know, so, so I'm telling you this so that you know that you don't have to worry about them getting done. I did them all already. Mm-hmm. And she goes, why would you do that? <laughs> why would you get your work done? Is that what she asked you? <laughs> yes. Um, oh. and, and without getting into a lot of the rigmarole, which nobody cares about, but the basic thing was... There were people I worked with um, over, over the past couple of years who had a habit of rescheduling appointments so that they wouldn't have to actually go see the people. And it became like a very like passive aggressive fight between the two shifts of scheduling stuff on other people's shifts so that you, know, you wouldn't have to go see people. This is not something I ever did, but other people did do it. And finally, I guess it got to a point where people weren't getting seen and we were, you know, we were out of compliance for a lot of them. So... Mm. They made up a rule, no more rescheduling. Just leave it, leave everything where it ends up on the schedule, and then, you know, and then if, you, if they don't get seen, let them roll over to the next day. And this was also a way of measuring how much help do we need. Now, I have been on a crusade since I'm back to stop using all the PRN people because they suck and they're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Just get rid of them. <laughs> yeah, I I don't want them. I don't, you know, like, we, to cover people when they're out, sure. To work the holidays, I don't want to work, absolutely. To, you know, to constantly use them to do to do the work, I'd rather not. Mm-hmm. So she says this to me, and I'm like, but it doesn't matter because I did it all, and I don't need them, and I don't want them. And she was like, and we went back and forth on this, and she kept saying and, fi- and finally, she goes, and this is the point of, that I wanted to bring up. She finally said, look, you have to see the sick calls on the days b- going by the schedule that we laid out that, you know, this dorm for this day, this dorm for this day. And I shot back at her. No, I am the schedule. Oh, <laughs> oh there was another a real fucking I- Walter White moment there. <laughs> I was to half Triple H, half Walter White. Um, <laughs> you know, and then I hit her with a mallet. Um, <laughs> nice. Fucking pedigree to write on her desk. 
so I'm fired. <laughs> so I literally, like, like angrily, like, fucking just yelled out, I am the schedule. And another one of my coworkers was in the room at the time who was, like, piping in, you know, periodically, just leave a few extra. Just leave a few. Don't do every single one of them. Just leave a few to make the point. And I sh- and then I just blurred out I am the schedule and she fucking died laughing. <laughs> I am the schedule. <laughs> nice. So, so that's no our fewer n- words have been spoken by this the way. Is, this is true. So this mm-hmm. is our this is going to be our band. The schedule. We are the schedule. It's going to be the two of us in a drum machine because they don't make mistakes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> have, have there's anything that uh, uh, oh uh, Wu Tang Clan taught me? That needed that uh, that one thing that needs. Uh, what was the name of that? Never mind. Just continue, Mark. Okay, that was a line from KMFDM Light, by the way. Oh, really? They're done by machine because they don't make mistakes. Like so, it. all of our songs will be written by AI, and all of our drumming will be done by machine. Okay, perfect. All right. And you just everybody can rely on us to make the mistakes. Our first album will be called The Singularity. I like it. Uh, well, <laughs> might have. Well, that's okay. That's all right. That's kind of a scary concept, but. <laughs> uh, all right, are you ready? To, are you ready to yes. hear this AI written song? This I love it. This Bring next, it on. This next step in evolution. Yes, sir. And a done by Rumahoy of all people. Yes, this is Bang Bang. I'll shoot you with my treasure gun. Bang Bang. I'll shoot you with my gun. Bang Bang Bang. I'll shoot you with my treasure gun. Bang Bang. I'll shoot you with my gun. Now I'll shoot you till you. Bang, bang, I'll shoot you with my gun. So, decidedly not about his dick. No, sir. Uh, as much as you'd like to project onto that, I'm afraid it is not. I, honestly, that's what... Here's the thing. I don't know if I would have jumped to that conclusion had you not been, oh, I can't believe they did this. And I'm like, well, clearly he's making oh, a big really? deal out of this because Captain Yarface is talking about his large rod. No, no, sir. His treasure gun, if you will, <laughs> that he wants to shoot you in the face with. This is <laughs> clearly love- about coming on people's faces, Jesse. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm going to say no. I, well, you never know. I mean, if they fed, let's say the new album hadn't been released, obviously, when they did this. Mm-hmm. So the only un- 1,000 hours of Rum Ahoy songs would have been like the previous album, uh, let's say, 1,000 times. So mm-hmm. was there a lot of sexual themes in that first album? <laughs> I don't believe there was. <laughs> okay. I mean, you never know. The AI might have got the idea from what was being, what was written back then. I, but, I have uh, to wonder now. If the guy who calls himself Captain Yarface, if he ends up hearing this, it's just like, how could you take such an innocent song like Treasure Gun, which was clearly about a shung that, gun that shoots jewels, you pervert? <laughs> oh, look, he's clutching his pearls, you know? Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to send mean, this to him on Twitter, and I, and I want him to respond, and I want him to tell me what a fucking idiot I am. <laughs> he, he will tell us it was very, very good, I imagine. Very, very good. <laughs> so... And what I loved about what I originally saw the tweet was like, okay, there's everything kind of like flows there at the beginning. You know, the bullets are diamond and the trigger is gold. It's a really good gun. It's very, very old. Really simple. You could see an AI doing that. But then all of a sudden, like, it throws rhyme, like, right out the fucking window. Yar, a treasure gun. It's my favorite weapon. All right, let's go and shoot it at a pirate. That does not rhyme at all. But... (laughs) <laughs> Somehow, Rumahoy makes it work in this song. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, they, the humpa sound that they use with the uh, accordion, um, or whatever the specific name of the instrument, where it's just the folding in and out instrument. Because an accordion, a piece of it is also like um, like a keyboard. 
Okay. So um, I don't know if you ever seen like Weird Al play the play the accordion. Yeah. You notice like he's 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 uh, pressing on keys, but he's also uh, pre- so I don't know if if accordion is the right word for just the folded out part. Um, you know what I'm talking about? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, but that's but that's that do <laughs> that sound. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking? Okay. Um, they really good effective use of that in in there. And again, they 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 brought a rhythm to it that without any music, you just hear the lyrics. You're like, okay, this was clearly written by a computer because this has no rhythm. <laughs> I love it when they get to the points where he's like, all right, let's go ahead and shoot a hundred bullets from this gun, and then he proceeds to go bang, and then there's a shot, and then bang bang, and you're like, holy shit, is he going to do this a hundred times? Uh, then he finally gets to like four, and he's like, I can't count higher than three. <laughs> So let's just sing along. Uh, That's uh, good stuff. Oh, dude. And this is my son's favorite song, by the way. Uh, so Colton immediately gravitated to this. First time he heard it, the next, you know, he's singing it. Bang, bang, bang. I'll shoot you with my treasure gun. But he, told, found, he better not sing that at school. He's going to get expelled. Then, yeah, no kidding. But then I realized, I, I wonder if he actually heard the last, ber- the last verse of the song. Uh, and it seems to, I mean, it speaks, it definitely speaks to Colton. Uh, I'll eat a loaf of bread and then I'll sleep inside a bed. That's Colton all day long. <laughs> <laughs> all right, this is one of my favorite songs oh, on oh, here, buddy. Here we go. Oh, this is a great one. This is a this is a tale, a whale of a tale. Mm-hmm. This is the legend of Captain Yarface. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum set sail, drink ale. Oh my gosh. Captain Yarface number one. Uh, oh man, I tell you what, I am right there with you. This is probably my top song off of this album. Oh, it's no poop deck party. Oh, oh well then. Okay. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Uh you know what I love is the visual I get of some old man at the beginning <laughs> talking about how he's going to tell us this tale and then Yarface comes in and like shoves his ass off the stage. He's like, it's me, <laughs> Captain Yarface! <laughs> it's very pro wrestling, isn't it? Like, Oh, yes. Like, he's just... I, I know I'm, I'm kind of repeating myself here, but he just became this gimmick and it's mm-hmm. larger... It's like, if Hulk Hogan was a pirate, he'd be Captain Yarface. Mm-hmm. It's yes. so good. 
Yes. There is a part in this song which we didn't get to uh, because of rights reasons. But, I mean, when he starts breaking it down and he starts talking about the other bands, mm. uh, you're like, I'll sh- what does he say here? I've got it in front of me. Hold on. Um, I'll spew all over Running Wild. I'll vomit on Red Rum. I'll <laughs> chuck my guts on Swashbuckle and Ale Storm our shit. <laughs> And then the, fucking, then the fucking guitar hits. It's like the greatest guitar solo ever. And it's just like, fucking Captain Yarpin. <laughs> Damn. I mean, wow. I mean, it is the only thing that this needed. And I've, I've tweeted him on this. I've left, a, I've, left, I've left a Facebook comment. This needed a welcome to the me somehow in here instead of like welcome to the sea because he does a variation of welcome to the sea on a lot of these songs. Mm -hmm. At some point, he needed to yell, I am Captain Yarface and welcome to the me because that would have been great. That would have been a great joke. Come on. Um, But but regardless, this song kicks all sorts of ass. The production on this album, I think, shines through uh, specifically on this song. And there's another song that I really like. But you talk about layers of stuff and it just sounds you don't sometimes want a pirate band to sound so crisp and so clean but i'll be damned dude if everything sounds great on this album well this album doesn't work unless you can understand the lyrics true that's true very true um you're gonna you're gonna lose a big part of that if you don't know what he's saying so um yeah the legend of captain yarface is like definitely the top one of the top songs on here um, so the first half of this is, you know, the, we, we listen to the first uh, four songs there, and it's very top heavy. These, you know, Cowboys of the Sea, Time to Party, Treasure Gun, Legends of Captain Yarface, they're all great. And your mileage may vary which one, you know, is one, two, or three, but these are some strong songs. Mm-hmm. The second half of this album, the B side, when I, when, you know, I think after this, then we're into the B side, but starting with Harambe the Pirate Gorilla. There isn't a bad song on here, but I don't know if I love Harambe the Pirate Gorilla and A Thousand Years of Dust. And and we'll, we'll hear that one in a little bit. We'll start with Harambe the Pirate Gorilla. And I don't know how you feel about it. Um, I'll let you break in after the song. But this one in A Thousand Years of Dust, I found myself thinking, like, look, all, all the applause and all the, the gratitude for trying something different and going in a different direction and not every song... It's about drinking and looting, that you're doing something a little bit different um, with the aesthetic, but there's something about these was a bit of a miss for me. So uh, here we go with Harambe, which I have to tell you how like I I missed this whole meme. It was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> you, I'm going to let old man Starcher fucking catch me up on Harambe oh, when we right. come back. This is Harambe, the Pirate Gorilla. Harambe! Okay, explain the Harambe thing to me. Okay, all right. So the incident occurred at the Cincinnati Zoo, May 28th, 2016. All right. So a three-year-old boy climbs into a gorilla enclosure. Like an and... idiot. <laughs> He's three, Mark. He's three. I don't know where his parents were. I'm sure that was a lot of the you're, discussion. You're right. I shouldn't make fun of the three-year-old. Three-year-olds will do stupid things. I should make fun of the idiot parents. There you go, sir. Uh, so the kid crawls in there. Harambe uh, grabs the kid 
and drags him. All right. The kid's like in this moat at some point, uh, but he's still alive. And so in a decision, probably a pretty tough decision, but I mean, you got to save the kid somehow. Sure. Uh, zoo officials decide to kill the gorilla. And right. there was apparently some, at least some feelings about what happened. There were some reactions. Oh, uh, I remember this. People were like, they should have shot the kid. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Cause incident we, was because we live with those kinds of idiots in the world. The, I'll read the reactions here. The incident was recorded in a dramatic video by an anonymous bystander and uploaded to YouTube, where it went viral, sparking global publicity and controversy. Some observers that uh, were there said it was unclear whether Harambe was like a, likely to harm the child. Others called for the boy's parents or the zoo to be held accountable for the gorilla's death. Director Thane Maynard that stated that ch- the child was being dragged around. His head was banging on concrete. This was not a gentle thing. The child was at risk. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. So that was Harambe. Takes the world by storm. Becomes a viral sensation. Memes everywhere. Hooks out for Harambe. Ramahoy gets a hold of the song. Uh, and like I said earlier, this was probably the song I most anticipated uh, when I heard that the album was going to be dropped. And you mentioned that the song, it, it was so crazy because we're in the middle of doing source material and Mark's just like all of a sudden stops everything. Okay, in my defense, you were <laughs> like, before the show started, you're like, hey, if Rumahoy makes an announcement, break in with news and okay. get it on what the you, schedule. What you did was you broke in with playing the video while we were on the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> and I was like, what is going on? And you're like, oh, well, hey, I think they dropped the song or dropped the song and we got to figure out if they're dropping the album. Uh, so anyway, yeah. So they dropped this one, and uh, you say you're not you're not too keen on it. I actually like it. I mean, it's not as good as some of the stuff that came before it. It's all right. But I'm and I'm I, still singing. I'm still singing this song. It's not, look. There's no bad songs on here, but I'm not gonna lie. If I have a, you know if if I'm listening to the album straight through, I might skip Harambe the Pirate Gorilla and go right to Poop Deck Party. Mm, there's other songs you could probably skip on here other than Harambe, but. Uh, I understand because you're a poop deck party uh, passionate person. I am. Listen, <laughs> I long for media and events and experiences that bring me and my children together, closer together. And my son and I rocking out to poop deck party. My son dancing on my wife's belly at 8 o'clock in the morning on oh, a Sunday nice. to poop deck party. Is what makes my life complete. Mm-hmm. It's what All gives right. me meaning and gives me a reason to wake up in the morning. Yes. All right. Well, I understand why you like the song so much, for sure. Absolutely. Well, you know, that's all I have to say, really, about Harambe. I like the, you know, I, I like the way the song is kind of put, like, it's kind of sung as Harambe at one point, and never <coughs> thinking about how much they're sorry that Harambe's dead because they would love to have him part of their crew. Uh, okay. So it's, a, it's silly. Okay, how? when was this? When was the Harambe incident? 2016. Seems a bit dated. Hey, now listen here, sir. <laughs> it's only been three years. I mean, is what's what's the next song? You know, what, what are they going to put on the next album? Fucking, uh, what's his face there in Africa? There is... You, uh, why don't you write Rum Ahoy? Why don't you write Captain Yarface and just start throwing some memes at him? This is what I want to hear next time. I want to hear an entire album of you. Listen, considering what they've done with the one woman yelling at the cat. True. <laughs> My gosh. That'll, that'll when will did probably, that become a thing? That will probably be on the next album. I, I, I finally saw one of those memes that I liked, and then my cousin shared it. Uh, and I think I've told you, my cousin has become a huge Clutch fan. Mm-hmm. So he shares a meme today of that meme, and it's the only one that I've ever liked out of the billions that I've seen so far on Facebook. And it's Neil Fallon's face on the chick, and it says, Firebirds, and then an exclamation point. And over on the other side, it has the cat, and above it, it says, Energy Weapons. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, all right. I almost shared it, but I decided against it. I saw one. I don't remember which one it is now. I know. It's a great story. Um, but I saw one where I legit, I mean, because a lot of these, I'm just like, these are giant eye rolls for me. Oh, yeah. I, I saw one 
where the cat's reaction had me laughing so hard, I I, I couldn't uh, contain myself. I had somebody, one of my friends, made a post yesterday. It said, congratulations. If you see this message, you have not been snoozed because you have not incessantly posted that cat being yelled at me. <laughs> I was like... I'll tell, tell you what I did laugh at, though, was crackhead Dave Chappelle going, God, no more of them ladies yell at a cat memes. <laughs> you fucking break. Stop it already. It's like the fucking meme that won't die. I mean, it really... I've seen other ones last that were made more sense. It just all of a sudden, like, took on a life of its own and then proceeded to get more ignorant as it continued. Mm-hmm. Like what's so, the gal, What's the woman from? First of all, I don't I don't, ask me. I, I, I don't know where this meme came from at all. I don't know who the woman okay. is, what show that's from, where the cat came from. I don't understand any of it. I there and they're two completely different memes, or I should say, two completely different pictures. Right. Um. So, but what they did, was somebody mashed them up. I actually looked it up because I was like, "What is going on here?" And I, for the life of me, obviously it wasn't so important that I decided to remember <laughs> and commit it to memory. I was like, okay, well, that answers that. Thank goodness. Hopefully I'll never have to see it again. That was false. Uh, so, anyway. There's a lot on Facebook I could live without right now. I don't blame you, sir. Not at all. Alright, but what I can't live without is, mm. are, Jesse, once again, are you ready to throw the shit in the air? Oh my goodness, like I just don't care. Poop Deck Party. Alright, all you glorious pirates, boys and girls! It's time for you to go completely crazy! Are you ready? This is Poop Deck Party! I was singing this at work today. <laughs> uh, I'm in the office. Just like we're not allowed to play music or podcasts or laugh or be happy. Because you ruined that. You probably ruined every single one of those things at some point I'm for everybody. Pretty, well, I was definitely doing all those things. Um, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure somebody else's reaction to it who shall remain a nameless cunt. Um, mm. <laughs> I'm sure complained. And of course... You know, of course, we, we we at least my work experience is is all about pacification of the of the loudest asshole. Oh yeah, squeaky wheel gets that grease. Yeah, so I'm sure that's what happened. There is, um, I is I say, hey, I'm gonna play this podcast really low. Does anyone mind? No, of course not. And then that person then runs and tells the boss. <laughs> uh... um, so all I'm left with is mumble singing around the office. And I was literally like, it was me and another guy working today. And I'm just like, I am Captain Yoffes and welcome to the Poop Deck Party. Poop Deck Party. (laughs) (laughs) And at one point he turned around and he was like, what are you saying? And I'm like, nothing. It's a Poop Deck Party. Don't tell the boss. Yeah, please. Please don't tell on me. (laughs) I'm singing a song about a, a pirate who went up to the top of the ship and found a bunch of shit. And then That's he threw the shit in the air and had a party. 
I don't know about you, but I used to have three dogs, and every morning was a poop deck party. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, boy. Uh, well, okay. So, we, we've we got to talk about the rapper that makes an appearance here, uh, which happens to be... Hang on, hang on. I'll play. I'll keep playing the song just to get that rap in there, okay? Oh, let's hear it. Let's do it. Okay, yeah. Let me go ahead and switch back. All right, so I'm going to play the song just long enough to get the rap in there. That was very, very good. I'm just... I am going to adopt that. If I'm putting anything on my verbal agenda, it will be me going around acknowledging people and going, That was very, very good. (laughs) Uh. So, okay. Yes, Christopher Bose of Ailstorm fame raps on this album. Nice. Now, now, okay, we just had a song. <laughs> two songs earlier, was it? Where, you know, Captain Yarface just called the Ailstorm, you know, shit. Uh, which is, that is a great example of, yeah, they've leaned into this gimmick, but, you know, this is all about having a good time. It's all about bringing people in and having a blast. So they bring in... A, a, Clearly, they don't think Ailstorm shit. They don't. They're not going to chuck their guts all over Red yeah, Rum or whatever he says. Th- this is not Biggie Tupac. No, no, we're not. <laughs> as much as we would love it to be, Rum Ahoy, dude. I I remember. Oh like, my I, god! Can you imagine Rum Ahoy versus Ailstorm in a sail by shooting? <laughs> Sail by shooting. Oh man. Oh, yeah, that's funny. You know it is. That's good. That's good. I remember, just, like, just after sailing past them and firing cannons. Like, the what first, the hell? <laughs> the first uh, Rum Ahoy album dropped, and like Rum Ahoy sparsely put stuff on their Facebook, you know, prior to this second album dropping. But when they would, every once in a while, it was a shot of Ailstorm. And he, he kept calling him like, you know, hey, it's it's little boy. And I was like, oh, my gosh, man. Well, of course, you find out that these guys are obviously friends. Um, I found an interview. I, I can't remember where oh, for the life of me. I know it was over. It was overseas. But um, Ailstorm brought these guys on tour with them. And the guy that was doing the interview interviewed both Captain Yarface and Christopher Bowes. Uh, and it was great. Uh, and you could tell, okay, I don't wanna I don't wanna take too much of the the magic away from Rum Ahoy, but you can probably tell that he pro- he most likely t- dials his vocals down like, I don't know, a two percent, three percent pitch. And to make it sound really, it it sounds really unnaturally deep. Yeah, uh, and it then also when you sounds him, a lot lower than the rest of the album, like the mix. Yes, yeah, the, you can hear the vocals, but they're not as profound over the music as others. Mm-hmm. And you can tell when he was delivering the interview, he does not. He did not sound like this. But again, he he's. I swear to goodness, he's seven feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> so the imposing uh, visual of Captain Yarface is still there, but uh, the vocals uh, y- you may not be as impressed. Which makes me wonder how they do it on tour. Uh, you know, I-, I imagine there's probably some kind of st- trickery that they can do audio wise, or maybe I just uh, you know it was a YouTube interview. Maybe the the you know the vocals on the YouTube interview were not the greatest. But either way, you know that Yarface and and Bose are friends. Um, and to see him pop up on Poop Deck Party, it took me a few seconds. I was like, did he say his name was Captain Chris? I was like, I couldn't remember the name of the Ailstorm lead singer off the top of my head. And sure as shit, 
it was Chris Bowes. And then when you go and see the credits for the uh, song, it's Chris Bowes. And that's great. I think that's, you know, that's wonderful in my opinion. What do you think, Mark? I love it. Love it. Poop, poop deck party. All right. Well, this one is very Corporal Clowney to me. Okay. This next one. This is the... <laughs> <laughs> the beer from my town is better than your town. Teach you, but I'd have to charge. A little shout out there to Milkshake. Yeah, that's right. That's uh, it's interesting that they they yank that of all things to put in there. <laughs> <laughs> that that again, I, like when I think of that, I think of Corporal Clowney, I think of vodka, I think of beer, beer, um, happy little boozer, you know, tequila, da, 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 da. wrong tequila, but <laughs> You know, we've, we've covered a, a, quite a number of Corporal Clowney albums on here. I've certainly hipped you to a lot of Corporal Clowney. And even yep. some of it wasn't nerfed by lawyers. Mm. Um, Bastards. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that one was very, to me, very, very, very reminiscent of a Corporal Clowney song. Very cool. Yeah. When you said, when you said Corporal Clowney, I immediately was like, ah, okay. Yeah, that's where this sound is. Um, you may recall a Weird Al Yankovic song called Genius in France where he basically uses the whole song to just uh, verbally insult French, the, the Frenchman. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and, and how, you know, how like the dumbest person from America could seem like the smartest person over there. Uh, he couldn't pour water out of a boot with instructions on the heel. So that is what this song reminds me of, where... <laughs> You know, Captain Yarface walks into a bar and then proceeds to insult every fucking person or every fucking beer that you have. <laughs> I'm on... Captain Yarface, so they can't drink this. <laughs> uh, and every, you know, just about every lyric is him tearing down some nation because of the beer uh, swill that they've tried to pass on to him. Um, they recorded this, by the way. I was on uh, in the metalarchives.com. They recorded this album in Lübeck, Germany, between January and September of 2019. So there you go. There's a little bit of trivia for you. Well, the Germans certainly do brew a nice beer. I don't know how well they brew rum, though. He's He wasn't impressed. He said, oh, wow. Okay, okay. he says, in Germany, I quaffed a lot of booze. It reminded me of smelly old shoes. <laughs> 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 this was for me. This is probably one of the weaker songs off this album. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, no. this one. He, he this can teach one, you, but he'd have to charge. Yeah, that's hackneyed. I'm sorry, but whatever. I I'm not going to say that it's horrible. I'll go, listen to the song. But go fucking moss with the gorilla. <laughs> your, harambe. Get your hoofs out for Harambe, Jesse. Hooks out for Harambe. All right, man. Now we're getting to what I'm going to call 1A off this album, Mark Radlich. A Thousand Years of Dust? 1A, A Thousand Years of Dust. You and I don't have the same taste in music. This one... You have not given... What if, I, I want you to play the song, then I want you to tell me what your problem is with it. I mean, I don't understand. All right, my problem, really is, you, my problem is you, first of all. I'm going to shoot you with my treasure I, gun. No, right in the face. <laughs> All right, here's Jesse's favorite song, A Thousand Years of Dust.
<sighs> that is an exhaustive e- exhale. <laughs> I don't understand how you cannot appreciate. Like, okay, of all the goofy shit that's on this album, all right, and I'll admit there are some elements of a thousand years of dust that are that's kind of goofy. I mean, these guys are fighting mummies. Come on, but this has to be one of the heaviest songs I've ever heard them do. I like the money pit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, if if only the tombs were filled with poop. <laughs> yeah, they were throwing it in the air. Would you believe my children had the nerve to call me immature? Oh, I cannot believe this. Yes, I cannot believe this. This came up in the car this morning. They were talking about the word immature and what it means. And my wife gave them a good definition of what it ah. is to be immature. And my daughter, bitch that she is. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> says, you know, I think that word describes daddy. Oh, boom goes the dynamite. And then they proceeded to rattle off a list of things about my personality that makes me immature. Can you believe it? I By believe the way, it. have I mentioned how much I enjoy dick jokes? Uh, let's talk about Treasure Gun again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, A Thousand Years of Dust is very heavy. It's a, it's a good song. I think I, I think the, the, the beginning throws me off. It has that, like, epic... Um, power metal feel to it and then it kind of shifts gears a little bit and it gets heavier as the song progresses but eh, I don't know I, I don't understand man I really don't but hey if it's it, it, I could see where you really liking poop deck party probably speaks <laughs> to <clears throat> I'm not and I'm to, not saying that to be dismissive or it, anything hey look I mean, in my top five was rage of light I think I'm just in I'm just in love with EDM metal okay that I could understand. That I could understand. Um, I, I don't know, man. I I think this song, lyrically, it, it's it's a great story. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Captain Yarface's crew gets captured by mummies. He's got to go rescue them. He gets in there. Uh, and then there is a point where the lyrics almost turn into... Uh, a Wesley Willis style delivery. Okay. <laughs> now, do you remember Wesley Willis? Um, Jello Biafra. Jello Biafra. Okay. All right. So, uh, Jello you know. Biafra. <laughs> I remember Wesley Willis would have every once in a while, he'd repeat all the stuff that he usually do in the middle of a chorus, and then he would like add at least two lyrics that described what was going on in the song. You know, Batman threw me to the floor. I got up. I threw him to the floor. You know, something like that. Well, at the end of this, at the end of this, we have this, we have Captain Yarface who grabs a gun. Is and, it a treasure gun? Uh, I, no, actually, the treasure gun is mentioned in this song. He says, will we find a treasure gun? It's just too soon to say. So they're obviously looking for treasure and the treasure gun in these in the uh, pyramids or wherever they're at here. Uh, so, yeah, at at one point he says, deep in the tomb, I find my crew chained up, surrounded by mummies. All right, that makes sense. I fire my gum, or I fire my gun, the mummies explode. Now let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that is like a Wesley Willis delivery, in my opinion. Sure. Uh, it, it's just like two things happen. All right, that's the end. Um, <sighs> but anyway, I... 1A, I think it is one of the heaviest songs that I've ever heard them do. And as far as the rest of the album goes, I think this is one of the most competently layered songs on here. Mark Radulich may not like it, but I know I like it, and I know some other people do as well. When I woke my kids up for school this morning, I told them, let's get physical. And then I played Olivia Newton-John's physical, and my son just threw himself on the floor. Did you have that all planned? No. No. It was all oh, okay. Uh, so, like you said, let's get physical, and they're like, "Oh, dad," and you're like, "Oh, okay, hold on a second. And you got the you got the, the Spotify out. Yeah. You didn't have the Spotify ready before you went in there and no, delivered the I, joke. No, I'm very spontaneous. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I listened to that. Uh, by the way, I listened to that Patton Oswalt bit of the uh, candy cane filled with oh, yeah drugs <laughs> a few days back. All of a sudden, I've decided to start listening to comedy albums on Spotify. Probably oh, thanks to your ass. I was gonna say, God, I can send you a hundred of them. 
Uh, I've listened to some funny stuff. I like Brian Regan. He's he's pretty funny. Yeah, uh, Brian Brian Regan's good. You got to listen to, um, oh gosh, the guy that does the. I'm having a hard time tonight between like not sleeping well and just all the stuff going on. But brain not uh, working. The brain the brain is not working. My my recall is shot tonight. Uh, the guy that does the bit on gun control. Um, I'll know it. Uh, all right. Uh, Google co- comedian gun control and it'll come up. Uh, he's like famous for it. Like his stuff is fucking hysterical. He's an Australian comic. Um, Jim Jim Jeffries. Jim Jeffries. Yes, uh, his stuff's on Spotify. Uh, Jim Norton. His stuff's on Spotify. Pat. Not- so, what did you think of the Pat Oswald candy cane full of drugs bit? Uh, yeah, yeah. That, I list- I got about halfway through that album. It was pretty funny. I. Uh- I like Jim Gaffigan. I don't know if you listen to him very much. I know Jim Gaffigan. Uh, okay, I I think I'm gravitating right now, of course, you know, when I'm by myself, I'll listen to just about anything, but usually in the morning, I'll throw a comedy album on when Kira's in the car, so I try to find stuff that is not going to be talking about things that yeah, she I probably not, should. Don't, don't put Jim <laughs> Norton on. <laughs> you know who she, almost crossed the line a couple times. I was you, like, know, oh. you know who she might like? Um, my wife, I play this, these bits for my wife, Eliza Schlesinger, she does a. She mostly does like a lot of stuff about just single women and dating and stuff like that, and it's really funny. She she did a bit that my wife thought was hysterical about uh, women going out for tapas. Okay. <laughs> and she's like, "This is something that guys don't do. They're just like one meatball will split a four ways, no homo. Like they don't do that." <laughs> you know. <laughs> she's. I, I find her to be very funny. The Strong Opinion Squad. Uh, think she should be chained to a kitchen making sandwiches. Oh, but well, that doesn't they, surprise me. That's, that's like 90% of the ladies out there. Yeah, that's what they think about most women. So, But <laughs> I find Elijah Schlesinger to be very funny. Uh, I, I'll and remember I that she, name. And I think, she, and, uh, I think her bits would... would uh, I think Kira would enjoy her. Okay, so. I'll remember that. I will remember that. All right. Um, all right, but speaking of dick jokes... Oh, my goodness. Now, this isn't... <laughs> this is one, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, now we're talking... This is Full Mast. So what's hilarious about that song is that the next one is a blatant ripoff. Like lyrically, they they go out of their way to say we are blatantly ripping off Alestorm. <laughs> That's the point of the song. But full mess, if you listen to it, is Nancy the Tavern Wench. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, hang on. Okay. See if you see if you can find it. Let's see what if, is Nancy the Tavern Wench? Is that from? Is that, that a uh, that, that's an Alestorm Alestorm song? song? Yeah. Oh boy. Oh boy. Um. Ugh. He's gonna beach ball it. 
Beach balling. Beach balling. Beach balling across the USA. Beach balling. Beach balls in your face. Oh, beach balls in your face. <laughs> what you got there, beach balls in your face? What's that? <laughs> beach balls in your face. Oh, no, now. Uh, okay, so let's see here. There it is. All right, you ready? Yeah, let me hear it. All right, here we go. This is Nancy the Tavern Wench from Captain Morgan's Revenge. Do you see what I'm saying? Absolutely. Okay. Yes, sir. I, yeah, I'd never heard that song from Mailstorm before, but it definitely... You've never heard Captain Morgan's Revenge? I don't think I have. You've never heard Captain you Morgan? You son of a bitch! <laughs> Can't believe you've never listened to it! Put it on a t-shirt, Mindy. <laughs> you've never heard dot, dot, dot. Uh, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, uh, well, Okay. <laughs> 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 I mean, I guess. Uh, I don't. I. I mean, they. Uh, we're gonna have to knock some points off. I mean, I don't know. It's still a great album, but I mean, I didn't realize that that was. It's obviously not a blatant ripoff of the song, but it's it's a version of it. I was gonna say that's that's almost a parody of it. Yeah, it's a version of it. Can we talk about what happens in this song? Full mess. Just real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Really? Does anything else need to be said other than he pulled down his pants and she wasn't impressed? And that, and then, okay, but that's not where the story ends. Okay, so <laughs> the the first girl, the first girl, he's like, okay, here we go. Pulls his pants down. She looks at it, you know, and then he's like, oh, wait a second, you know, I see a hotter girl. He's like, I'm better than that. Pulls his pants up, goes and finds the hot chick. Pulls his pants down. She looks at it, and he's she's not impressed with it. All right, so you think that'd be the end of the story? Well, it's a sad day for Captain Yarface. He can't get laid, but then all of a sudden he decides that in a fit of rage 
he's going to accuse someone of stealing his hat, and he's going to kill everybody there. Sure. <laughs> I think I think he's working through some issues here. Captain Yarface, <laughs> the incel. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, poor Captain Yarface! But my goodness, he didn't have to react in such I don't, a I don't crazy believe, manner. I don't believe Captain Yarface wouldn't get laid. I feel like the, the I feel like with his celebrity and his millions from the treasure he's looted and the albums he's sold, there's always women willing to sleep with him, no matter what his dick looks like. Why are we? We just listened to a song that specifically said he did not get laid because there he was not imp- they was not impressive apparently I, the apparently he just needed to announce i'm captain yarface ding here it is <laughs> uh his poor rusty old cannon mark i i don't feel i mean it's a funny song but i don't believe it's it's true to life i i think there's okay. plenty of women that would ease listen i have seen a lot of rich gross men with hot women it's a thing it happens would you consider this a pirate shanty to make you drop them pirate panties? <laughs> very, that was very, very good, Jesse. <laughs> very, very good. <laughs> All right. Um, I love this next song. Oh. I didn't realize what this was at first, and then I gave, and then I listened in. I listened real closely, and I was like, I was dying laughing. <laughs> There's so many levels, too. It's great. Uh, one, because I love the Ailstorm song. Mm-hmm. It's so, a good one. Yeah, so this, uh, this is our last song of the night, and then we're getting out of here. This is fucking Stolen Treasure. I am uh, very fond of saying to people when I go to do assessments and I walk into the, the mod and I say to them, I am here to drink your beer. Oh, the the reactions I get to that. Uh, 
Let me try that one more time. Hey, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> so I am very fond of saying to my coworkers when I go into the mod, I'm going to go see people, and they say, I am here to drink your beer. Okay. All right. And I, and I, get, a, I get a lot of reactions to that. Well, they, they, they don't know what to think, I'm sure. They were like, well, do you have beer? I'm like, no, <laughs> just give me the fucking inmate. <laughs> the other, you, don't under, you don't understand me. The other thing I like to tell people is that the solution to their problems is in my shorts. Oh, oh there you go. I, <laughs> sure, I that said gets you some fans. <laughs> I said that to a room full of deputies today and one uh, corporal. <laughs> they, were like, they have got this fucking list of all the <laughs> shit that you've said. One day they're going to whip it out and they're going to be like, okay, on the day of uh, November 13th at 7 a.m., did you utter to your fellow deputies that the solution to their problems is in your shorts? And I will say, yes, I did. They asked me, like, why did I add? They were joking around. They were like, why did you agitate this one inmate that they had to uh, they had to escort away, you know, back into his cell because he was starting to fight them? And I was just like, I got your agitation. It's in my shorts. Mm. Later on that day, I said to a corporal, I said, yeah, he wanted me to send him to the CSU. I told him the CSU was in my shorts. <laughs> <laughs> the corporal uh, uh, blinked twice and was like, "Good to have you back." Yeah, um, <laughs> welcome back, Mark. <laughs> welcome back. So, I, uh, I do you say that to people? Do you, do you tell them that their their unemployment checks in your shorts? No, sir. I do not say that <laughs> at all. I think you should. Oh, well, well, yeah, got, that go over real well. I need my unemployment check. I got your unemployment it's really my, well. It's in my shorts. My shorts. <laughs> A uh, solid uh, A for Rum Ahoy for this one. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we have to do something real quick. Which, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, Stolen Treasure, if you ain't figured it out, they're pirates, and they pirated a song. That's the greatest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It's so um, good. I, I, I love it. So we have, I have to, I have to go back, Mark, and we have to talk about the word count, okay? Okay, Just real please. quick before yes. we close this out. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I have made a dire mistake. Oh, a dire mistake! Uh, when we did our first God word, damn count it, there, Jesse! I know, I know, I ruined it already. When I did the first word count, I only included the lyrics for "Stolen Treasure," so no <laughs> wonder, no wonder the first word, uh, those words were "rum, rum, rum," and then "rum, rum, rum." Um, no, I did not include the whole album. So here we go. All right, the whole album includes thirty-three, three thousand, excuse me, three thousand three hundred ninety-five words. And is a readability level of the of a ninth to tenth grade student. That makes sense. Okay. All right. Uh, a number one word, ladies and gentlemen. Sixty times, if you took a drink every time you heard the word rum, you will have taken sixty drinks by the end of this album. <laughs> sixty drinks. You will have sobered up in three days. The next one. The next one down is. Number two, bang with fifty-one utter iterations. Is that a word? Yeah, we'll go with that. Iterations, um, iterations, iterations, iterations. Um, yeah, fifty-one iterations. And then number three is aisle, which okay, that's that's pretty common. All right, let's talk about the two-word combinations. Oh boy, Mark Radlish, number one, poop deck. <laughs> with Thirty coming in at. 30 times you get to hear that on the uh, on there and then you hear um, number three is pretty important it's a bang bang and that is uttered 26 times and then three word combinations this is funny all right so number two has 18 uh, 18 instances and number one has 24 instances of three word combinations and these combinations are I'll shoot you. <laughs> and then uh, this all has to be from Treasure Gun because number two is bang, bang, I'll. And then number three is bang, I'll shoot. So it's got – and then number four is shoot you with. And then number five is you with my. And then number six is poop deck party. Uh, so Where there you go. Where is I and Captain Yarface? It is not on here. Captain Yarface – oh, I'm sorry. Two-word combinations coming in at number eight, Captain Yarface – Nice. 20. <laughs> Perfect. So, there you go. That you was a fun one, man. You would be very drunk listening to this album. <laughs> it's all got to be Captain Morgan's rum, some kind of it, uh, some kind of rum there. So, 
Uh, Mark, yeah, solid A. Did you say A plus? Because that's no, what I'm giving this. No, I'm not giving this an A plus just because of um, I got I got to knock off the plus for Harambe and Thousand Years of Dust. Are you okay? Now, when we reviewed when we reviewed Ramahoy, uh, their first album. Oh my goodness, what was it called? Triumph yeah. of Piracy. Yeah. Did you give that an A plus? Do you remember? I don't know, who knows. Are you going to say that this one? This one is by far better than Triumph of Piracy. Oh, absolutely! All right, look if i if I gave the Triumph of Piracy an A plus, then this is an A plus too. Okay. If I didn't, um, even if I gave the Triumph of Piracy an A, this is still better. So A plus. The problem is, I may have graded them too highly because I love gimmickry. <laughs> That's not a bad thing. <laughs> not a bad thing at all. I love this album. I really do. I, and even you know, like. Harami the Pirate Gorilla and Thousand Years of Dust didn't necessarily do it for me, but they're not bad songs either. So, yeah. Well, I can tell you the first six songs, including Harambe and Poop Deck Party, those were, you know, it, it's just like a rocket joyride for me. Yeah. And then we hit The Beer from My Town is Better Than Yours, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, as, what was it, Les Claypool said, they can't all be zingers, and that's fine. It's This isn't this isn't horrible, in my opinion. The no. beer... That one's this not was bad. so much fun to talk about. So much fun to listen to. This is one I'll probably keep on the playlist for a while. Oh. Like, like you know me, my routine after Metal Hammer of Doom is and delete playlist. <laughs> um, this one I'm probably going to hang on to for a while because I really like. Sometimes I get out of work and I'm like, I just don't want to hear people talk. I, I need something to kind of lift my spirit. I've told a lot of people the solution to their problems were in my shorts today. I need to. <laughs> I I need some verbal alcohol. And so yeah. Rumahoy works in that vein. There was a point this morning where I was like, okay, I need, when I sit down at work, I've got to figure out what I'm going to listen to. And I was like, man, I don't know if I'm in the mood for like Rumahoy right now. And then I was like, oh, well, you know, we're doing the show tonight. I better just go ahead and give it a shot. And as soon as I heard, I am Captain Yarface and I am back, I'm like, all right, I'm fucking in. Let's rock and roll. This is going to be a great day. <laughs> I mean, it turned it, as much as I didn't think I would enjoy that music as that first song, Cowboys of the Sea. And I was like, you know what? This album is so good that it, it's just, it, you know, it, it it's great to be absorbed as a whole. It's not anything that I'm just like, okay, well, I've got to piece it out. I love every single song off of here. I can listen to every single song off of here, and as an album, I think it does it does a great job. So, A plus for me too, man. All right, next week, Dragon Force Extreme Power Metal. Last week, Jesse got to pick an album. As I Lay Dying, Shaped by Fire. The week before that, uh, as the month of October ended, we did a TV party instead of a Metal Hammer of Doom for Lords of Chaos. So, uh, and we're gonna end the month of November. Our Turkey album this year. It's not really a turkey, though. It's not like a bad album. It's one of the it's one of the great albums, as a podcast once told me. Wu Tang Clan, Enter the Wu Tang, Thirty Six mm. Chambers. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be a fun one. We're doing that because we're talking about the Wu Tang Clan, Wu Tang, an American saga, on TV party. So I figure we do both at the same time. So the rare rap album here on the Metal Hammer of Doom, because what's more metal than the Wu Tang Clan, which ain't nothing to fuck with? That's right. All right. Uh, that's it. That's all my plugs. Do, do your thing. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, go give the Rattlechin Broadcasting Network Facebook page a like to stay up on top of all the great podcasts that we have to offer. There are some great uh, podcasts out there on the Patreon, so if you'd like to donate $1 a month, we'll take it, and you'll get access to a lot of content right over there on our Patreon. Uh, the Patreon is called, get this, Mark Rattlich. Uh, nope, that's not it. Let's try Patreon. I want to give the link because nobody made patreon.com slash Radulich, R A D U L I C H. There you go. That's a tough one to remember. I'll be creative. <laughs> also, if you want to uh, talk to me on Twitter, I'm at Mark Radulich, M A R K R A D U L I C H. You can also leave comments on our Facebook page, Radulich and Broadcasting Network. Uh, if you're one of the weirdos that listens to us on YouTube, uh, I have a YouTube page where you can find all of our uploaded shows uh, where we violate copyright law uh, mm. with like day pirates. in and day out. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like like pirates. Uh, you can leave comments there. Um, if you have a legit comment, we'll respond to you usually. If it's you know just kind of you know informing us or insulting us, either way, 
Um, you know, I'll probably like it, and that that's it. Uh, I'm I'm really open to any uh, feedback you guys want to give on on my Twitter at Mark Rattledge. You can check that out. Let us know what you think of the show. Uh, we also post in the in one of the heavy metal groups on Facebook. So if you happen to catch the show there, if, if you're one of those people in that group, uh, leave a comment on it. Tell tell us how you doing, how we're doing, what you thought of the review, that sort of thing. And finally, for those of you uh, who listen to us on iTunes, go ahead and give us a uh, a review. Give us a star rating. I don't care how many stars. Everyone begs for five star ratings. I'm no beggar. I don't beg, and I don't back down from challenges. So, as I told there Robert you Winfrey, go. Mm-hmm. Uh, you you give us what you what your soul tells you to give us. But I would really, really love it if people would leave some comments about the show. Um, these guys are a couple of fuckwits. That's fine. Um, <laughs> stop talking about your stupid kids. That's fine. I all of these are acceptable. <laughs> all right. All right, yeah. Hey, uh, and I think uh, if you want to follow me, you can do so at Stiznarky on Twitter, S-T-I-Z-N-A-R-K-E-Y. Don't pick on uh, Jesse, though. He doesn't like it. No, I disappear. You'll never see me again. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. We never talked about a baby metal album before. I don't know. Like your <laughs> baby metal song? A painkiller? No. J- Jesse, you'll so suddenly you see Jesse wearing a top hat, monocle, and a mustache. <laughs> Who is this Jesse you speak of? All right, Mark Radlich, let's get out of here, man. All right, throw your shit in the air. It's time to have a poop deck party. Actually, our poop deck party has come to an end. Be well, be safe, and behave. (laughs) 